it definitely puts all of that into context so actually before we end talking about joe rogan talking about mr jre big news for him and actually quite funny news in that respect um so this article came out via digital music news i'm not sure how reputable they are but the headline says um, spotify employees demanding direct editorial oversight um oversight oversight over joe rogan podcast before they're published mad headline right because if you know anything about joe you'd know the one thing that he hates is people telling him what to do you get that impression anyway right he's the person that was rabbiting on and on about how amazing podcasts are the freedom it gives people to kind of do their own thing it's just him and jamie and a couple of people that uh, make jerry happen and it kind of goes against everything that he's had experience with you know doing um Oh, what's the show that he did god almighty why has my head gone blank doing the the, the 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 news radio and the other thing he did anyway whatever show right so he he's obviously got experience working within um the regular you know corporate tv industry bullshit stuff so he knows the other way the industry can be for you so for him to have his own thing that he does with his own friends and he provides a platform for them to become more famous he gives access to intellectuals and authors and publishers and whatever maybe to um reach a bigger audience and just in general right kind of share his love for martial arts and all that sort of good stuff hunting blah 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 to finally get to the position now where he's at now where he's finally set cemented his legacy he's one of the sort of you know forefathers and um real icons in the podcast and space for someone you know especially spotify employees to think that they have any way of telling him what to do is very 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 funny from the outside looking in but it's also for me a real big reminder of what it's like working in the startups right and what it's like working for some of these tech companies because unfortunately i think joe might not have known this but most of these tech companies especially the employees that happen to occupy operations and marketing they're usually quite left-leaning um i find that usually the engineers in startups are a little bit more conservative um sometimes they keep it themselves but i always tend to find the more interesting debates and conversations regarding society or societal issues to usually come from the guys in engineering and usually uh, product and engineering usually i find those guys more interesting to speak to and they're a bit harder to get involved in and you know have any kind of long lasting relationship with because they have their little clicks and sometimes a few of them can be legitimately autistic you know which is the story for another day but i generally find that they are a lot more tolerant than the people that occupy the operations and marketing side of things so i'm not so, so i wouldn't be surprised if the people that are actually complaining about joe rogan that's what i find the employees definitely uh fit into one of those teams um but it's funny because if you're daniel eck and you're the ceo of spotify and you've essentially brought joe rogan in to spearhead your new your new push for podcasts you've obviously want the joe rogan clout you want that cosign you know it immediately boost your overall listenership which is then going to allow them to raise more money um in the stock market you know how it works right you can you know you can add some zeros to your um marketing deck or to your investment deck when he goes out and does meetings obviously you can put him in his pitch deck as well well there's loads of real benefits that come with just having a joe's rogan cosign even though it's just a licensing deal it comes with a lot of um cool points and of course there's always the opportunity if you're spotify to say hey this is only a licensing deal but joe rogan might have such a great time on that platform he might want to develop more shows he might want to recommend friends he might want to stay on whatever it may be right there, there's always opportunity for the business to kind of continue after the term has the contract has basically come to its um contractual end um but having said all that right having said all that the funny thing about it is that he probably should have known of this prior when you see where is it the, 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 yeah when you see this video on youtube that kind of spotlighted some of the staff members so let's see spotify let's see if i can find i should have had it on the list staff was i forgot what it was this might be a good representation of just how different um yeah just how different um politically or ideologically the people that work at spotify especially the people that would be offended about joe rogan's um political leanings about joe rogan's opinions about joe rogan's jokes um it probably should have been a sign for him to have known that this this was always going to end in tears so this is the video I was going to talk about. It's a video from Spotify titled Transgender Rights. 
At Spotify, everyone just trusts each other and has this culture of it's okay to ask questions even if they might be difficult questions. Pronouns are kind of a, a tricky subject for me uh, in that I keep going back and forth about kind of what what to use, what to use where. Well, I spent about 30 years or so. Now, what do you think Bard thinks when he listens to the Joe Rogan podcast? What do you think Bard thinks when he hears Joe Rogan you know, taking the piss out of Caitlyn Jenner for the 70th time? What do you think uh, someone like Bard thinks when uh, Joe Rogan's got you know, um, I don't know, James Lindsay on and they're bemoaning um, social justice warriors and they're shrieking about college campus students going, you know, irate because they wouldn't let him talk at some, you know, lecture somewhere. What do you think he thinks about this? A senior software engineer too, so not some, you know, numb nut. Again, maybe it goes against what I was saying about most engineers are conservative, but just bear with me. This is not some, like, you know, some social media intern. This is somebody that kind of is part of the fabric of Spotify, someone that probably has a lot of um, influence when it comes to some corporate decisions. So it really must be tricky. Again, if you're Daniel Eck, right, and you've brought Joe Rogan in as your whale, you, you're, you're pinning all your hopes on him for the next quarter, whatever it may be, right? And then to have your staff members who are integral for Spotify to get to position where they are now, right? And who have, you know, lived completely different lifestyles to what Joe Rogan lives. Um, or maybe, not, yeah, Joe, Joe Rogan's tolerant, don't get me wrong. But, the, you know, they wouldn't imagine they'd be friends, right? They probably have a very different view of how they view the world. Um, and, you know, they're allowed to coexist. But unfortunately, in this era that we live in at the moment, that's not possible. People want to either, it feels like we're living in an era where, it kind of reminds me of like Genghis Khan, right? Where it's like, in one sense, you could say Genghis Khan was a liberator, right? But in another sense, he was also a tyrant. But in 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 its purest form, he would always, you know, offer the option of like, join us or die. A really obviously bloody and gruesome death. But there was opportunity to kind of join my tribe or you die. And it feels like in this era, where that's what we're currently living in. We're living in an era where you either agree with my POV or you get cancelled and you never speak again. There's no like, let's agree to disagree. There's no, oh, um, I like hearing your side of things, but I'm going to stick to my side of things, right? There's no, there's none of that. There's no like, in, there's not even no intellectual conversation. There's no like, just te te back, back and forth. It's just my way of seeing the world is the right way. Your way is the wrong way. You have to be deleted if you don't join me. So you can just imagine them not being fringed only because of that. I think in the, in a, in a more optimistic uh, world, right? A world where people had maybe progressed past this stupid infantile counterculture thing that we have going on at the moment and were okay with letting people make mistakes, okay with maybe thinking giving somebody right you don't hear that too often people saying right you only hear that in a religious sense you don't even hear people saying oh i'm gonna forgive this person um you don't live we don't even give people the benefit of doubt even anymore sometimes right someone can do a million and one good things and then the moment they do one slightly bad thing loads of stories start coming out about them being a complete monster when prior no one's had nothing to say so that's kind of the issue at the moment so if you're joe rogan and you're looking at this video and you're looking at some of the staff members on here and how passionately they're speaking about um Spotify, Bard here said um, they had been at Spotify for what thirty plus years. Like you just imagine the 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 feathers he's ruffling in that office uh, just by being there alone. And again, it goes to show, like Joe Rogan did us in the beginning. Hey, I'm taking this deal. It's just a license deal. Nothing's going to change. But we've already seen the changes, mate. You know what I mean, like shows up, episodes are missing. No explanation on that regard. Cool, no problem. It's your stuff. Do what you want to do. But then. Now we have this situation where suddenly he's apologizing for stuff. He does apologize, don't get me wrong, but the way he did it, the fact that it came after, it was something so innocuous as, you know, this forest fire stuff, which he probably ended up making it worse anyway by apologizing in the first place because not many people, I guess, cared about it, I would assume, in general. But hey, let's continue with the video. So in the closet, because my previous employers didn't have any particular tolerance for, for transgender people. At Spotify, we have employee resource groups, and Spectrum is our LGBTQ plus employee resource group. At Spotify, having a diverse workforce and being an inclusive is important so everyone can feel like themselves at work. So what we did is to come up with a list of essentially every medical procedure that trans people might need. Basically, Spotify said, oh, we didn't realize there was a problem there. We'll fix it. And that was pretty amazing.
As of 2019, we now offer masculinization and feminization treatments recommended by wow. the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. It's not a question of vanity. You know, for someone who needs these things, it's really a question of being able to be perceived, you know, as themselves. At Spotify, everyone's part of Spotify. Everyone's a member of the band, and everyone is determined to help everyone else who needs it. My advice is don't be afraid. There's nothing wrong with knowing who you are and where you stand. Part of what I'm doing here is trying to be visible so people who are like me know that they're not alone. So after seeing that, you can you're not surprised now that um <laughs> some store bought by staff are gonna be like, you know what, let's get this Joe Rogan guy out of the paint. So this article from Digital Music News says the following A group of Spotify staffers are now reportedly pushing to introduce direct editing oversight for the Joe Rogan experience before the episodes go live. That includes content flags, trigger warnings, reference to fact checked information, or simply refusing to publish episodes at all. Jesus Christos. Um, the demands follow a string of controversial comments by Joe Rogan, who was lured into Spotify uh, in a massive $100 million deal. Rogan's appeal to millions of listeners is unfiltered and un uh, um, irreverent approach, though that style isn't sitting well with the activist group of Spotify staffers who say it needs to be reined in. Earlier this month, uh, Digital Music first reported that multiple podcast episodes were missing following a migration to Spotify platform that included controversial interviews from the likes of Alex Jones, Milo Yiannopoulos, Milo Yiannopoulos uh, Gavin McGuinness, also missing episodes with right-wing figures such as Owen Benjamin, Stephen Molyneux, and Charles C. Johnson. So, obviously, that's the issue in it at hand, isn't it? The fact that it's, you can say because again i love joe rogan right i listen to every single episode i don't care who's on i listen to it all the time i follow him on social um i drink coffee that he drinks i use kettlebells i watch mma i, I did a bit of jujitsu i did muay thai part mostly or you know yeah mostly due to joe rogan so i'm a big fan of the guy right but you can't deny that the warning signs should have been there for any any fan of joe rogan the moment those those episodes went missing from the migration over because initially what happened when they migrated over is that we kind of all assumed that oh because it takes a while for the RSV to populate that those missing those missing episodes would probably pop up because I think it wasn't any coincidence that those ones that are missing were also the ones that kind of went over the three hour mark some some of them were like three twenty a couple of them might be in four hours so it kind of made sense that they weren't around then when we didn't hear an explanation from joe regarding it right and which is again he doesn't he doesn't really loves to explain stuff the more people push him to explain the more he refuses in in general he's quite stubborn in that way but uh, in terms of it being a content um censorship sort of issue you would assume he would be willing to clear it up quickly because he hates censorship right that's the one reason why he decided to leave youtube um and potentially you know other platforms that the podcast is on like apple because he was kind of um put aback by how the tech companies essentially unilaterally decided to cancel alex jones right all in unison um based off kind of you know he's i guess his um statements regarding the sandy hook shooting but in general right that kind of maybe you know censorship is a big deal to joe Rogan, right he had bloody jack dorsey sitting down for like what three or four episodes going back and forth around you know what was going on in censorship on twitter and whatever it may be so you'd assume he would come out and say something the moment he didn't and the moment he tried to leak the news to alex jones and convince alex jones that it wasn't that and that he's supposed to be gonna have a great hits on the youtube channel all this sort of bullshit that was already the warning sign for me of like okay spotify definitely putting a foot down because he made it seem like in the beginning that this is just a licensing deal i'm taking the money just to license it and i think if you're being adult grown up about this you should understand especially if you've worked in corporate companies if you've worked for a startup you should know whenever any company invests that kind of money those kind of zeros to somebody they're going to have some influence on what that person does now it might not be direct it might not be just it might not be exactly what they're asking for whereas direct editing oversight it might just be influence in terms of having them in your back of your head right because they're sending you many emails they're inviting you to meetings wherever it may be or because the stuff they said in public they're going to have some sort of um indirect influence over what you're doing it's just unavoidable you can't take 100 m's from a company and they just do what you want it just doesn't work that way again it was optimistic to feel that it was optimistic for us to hope that would be the case because we all love joe and the fact that he's a little bit of a podcasting pirate he kind of you know um moves to the beat of his own drum but 
especially when he started to stop he, he stopped doing the live streams on youtube because things were getting flagged and he was worried about his channel maybe getting taken down due to strikes it kind of felt like that he was already compromising in ways you wouldn't have assumed he would have not compromised it he was adjusting in ways you wouldn't have thought he would have adjusted in years gone by he might have probably decide to go and make his own platform i don't know whatever but he the fact that he went to stay on there and just kind of play by the rules in some way shape or form show that you know again the older you get the more unlikely you are to always be fighting against things right you just get tired you just want to kind of just live life and be chill but i think the moment one m's clears your account you just have to accept that you're going to have to make some adjustments in order to make the other partner happy in some way shape or form it continues here, it says, but despite the glaring omission, Spotify staffers, staffers are now stepping up their demands to control more of Rogan's content. Verse, uh, Vice first reported that on Spotify employees have conducted more than 10 meetings to discuss the possible changes. Those discussions include proposals for outright removal of um, additional podcast episodes. And again, the interesting part about it, if you're a Spotify employee, imagine giving imagine caring that much about some random guy because again joe rogan's an influence influential guy don't get me wrong but he's still just a dude he's just a dude who happens to be very successful at what he does but he's just a guy right he's not a politician he's not a member of congress he's not you know what i mean i like, guess he can be influential in that way but imagine caring that much about fact checking a guy that's smoking weed smoking cigars drinking whiskey shooting shit with his friends but then you're not kind of putting the same demands on news networks such as CNN and Fox News that from the outside looking in are really stoking the fires and essentially um, dividing the nation, right, in what they're doing and how they're covering um, the politics of America and the issues that, you know, affect, um, you know, everyday Americans. You'd assume they are probably a greater enemy to the overall health of that nation than Joe Rogan's podcast. You would assume so, wouldn't you? So to kind of um go after him and tell him to delete shows or take things down trigger warnings is just so reductive it really really is man it really really is because you hope again let them have what they want right and you honestly think life would improve that much for people for your regular everyday american out in there like suffering now during the pandemic i don't think so um and there's also a part of me that's like hey your stuff remember at a spotify 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 um you know like if anything daniel Ek could easily say that you know the hiring of joe rogan was essentially was partly due to him wanting to secure the futures of everyone that works for him right to ensure that they're able to clear payroll to ensure that people's um stock options are worth something going forward because you know i still have the feeling that spotify would most are more, are more likely than not than any other platform have the potential to shoot themselves in the foot by dropping the ball on maybe moving into you know maybe their refusal to move into tech um essentially how they've sort of like you know got in bed with some of the record labels that could come back and bite them in the ass there is possibility that spotify is not going to keep exponentially growing the way it is and become more popular it might hit a point where people just move off and go into the next thing so there's no guarantee so if you're daniel Eck and you finally get your organ on you're sort of doing it in the hopes of having some level of guarantee in terms of you know exposure revenue all this sort of stuff so to have your staff members demanding you to take that guy off the platform is like no he's paying for your wages so so but again as a ceo part of the reason of a ceo is like a you're like a chief what they call some some people call it a chief energy officer you're essentially responsible for making sure you set the tone so if you set the tone in your company of that you know they have 11 meetings about this guy or 10 sorry and then you completely ignore what they say that's gonna set a weird precedent you know people want want to work for that company or they'll just think that their voice is not being heard in any way shape or form and there's nothing that in there's nothing worse than working in a place where everyone feels like they can't say what they want to say or they feel like as if what they're saying isn't getting paid attention to it's the horror it's the worst trust me i've been in those scenarios i've been in those lunch rooms it's really really awkward it continues yes yeah, so a particular focus in earlier conversations featuring the author abigail schreier i mentioned that previously it says part of the um rationale is that spotify already exerts control over content like playlist even those created by outside creators so why not extend that oversight that is really telling i didn't know that they have they have they have influence over playlists that other curators make why do they have control over that so if i make a playlist and starts popping off what they what can they do take songs off reorder them that doesn't make any sense that's mad i didn't know that that's very revealing 
It continues says, um, this has reportedly gone all the way up to the top, though Spotify CEO Daniel Ek appears to be pushing back. From a business standpoint, the reason is fairly obvious. Joe Rogan's audience like his direct unedited style and could easily abandon the comedian podcaster if he's edited. That might explain why the Sharia podcast is still alive, though a strange development um, emerged earlier today. In episode, Joe Rogan alleged that a left-wing activist had intentionally set wildfires in states of Oregon, a claim refuted by the FBI and other officials. He said, I officially... So I actually love Portland. It's one of my favorite places to perform. Most of the people there are very nice, but there's madness going on there. You want to talk about the madness of the crowds. That exemplifies that right now. They arrested people for lighting forest fires up there. They arrested left-wing people for lighting forest fires there. Air court activists, this stuff isn't widely being reported. So again, bad thing I mentioned in, my, in another clip of on the show but again this isn't anything out of the norm for Joe Rogan isn't it he talks about you know ayahuasca and aliens and Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster and serial killers drug like this is just one of those stories that you just kind of throw out there hoping that it might be true but to, to, for this one statement regarding something that you can't categorically say isn't happening either right you can't i don't know if they can categorically say that but i'll assume looking from the outside in that there is a possibility that some of these forest fires are being set by men or are, are man 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 made or whatever that term is um to suggest other so just putting out there isn't misinformation now maybe saying categorically that they're doing this or that they're purposely doing this to what uh, um essentially uh bring you know you know set wreak havoc on a nation that's one thing but i don't see this as anything out of the ordinary for a standard joe rogan podcast show actually um it continues here oh, it says apology blah 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 so um of course um that little of the an oversight could create a serious rift between rogan and spotify beyond that it could also constitute a breach of contract which would give rogan an exit from the deal now this is something that i'm not too sure about i'm not too sure people put too much faith into contracts i don't think contracts it depends maybe if you're joe rogan and you're that much of a killer and you've been successful this much in your, for this long in your life it's probably because you're not that dumb right so because you have some really smart people in your team who are able to put in some really clear concrete terms into your contract so that he does because you know like i said joe, joe rogan's very picky about the things that he does he's very particular about not wanting to do more than what he's already doing and he's very careful about who he aligns himself with so i'm sure if they did do a deal that there was something in place of like hey i do this thing and you do that thing and then that's it there's no overlapping so that might be it but i don't know how detailed that would be in a contract about hey um you can't suggest or give me any insights on my show because it would breach contact i'm not too sure if that's true i don't know again i don't know maybe because and again did they give him the money up front was it based on milestones was it terms of condition based like i wonder what the deal is with that because that would probably explain a lot of it because if they can get away with just you know, imagine they sign a hundred million dollar deal, but it's only twenty percent up front and the rest comes after he hits some certain milestones. They could probably be able to write that off just for the sake of keeping some of their stuff, especially if it's like senior engineers and stuff who are really hard to replace, right? Um, especially some of the better ones. You don't want to be in a position where they're all leaving because of one person, right? You need to choose the option that serves a greater good. But again, as a fan of the show and as a fan of Spotify too, as a service, like they're going to lose a lot of listeners overnight if they decide there will be so much bad press on both ends, I think. If they keep on going with the show, um, the left-wing media um, are definitely going to you know, come down them like a ton of bricks. And if they do end up um, taking it off, then the people who are rational, the people who are kind of looking for that kind of unfiltered, raw podcast shows on Spotify, they're not getting that kind of hit on there. They're going to be up in revolt as well and you know i mean they'll, i assume a lot of them will probably vow never to use spotify again and stuff like that so it's not an enviable decision to be in but i think again for me looking from the outside in i just think this was inevitable i don't think there was any way shape or form joe rogan could get 100 million m's and not have any kind of and not relinquish some sort of response not some sort of creative control it would be optimistic for him to suggest so for to think so i think the fans were hopeful that that would be the case um but it's just you can't do it you can't get to bed with a big corporation and not expect to get fucked in some way shape or in some way shape or form it's just bound to happen there's no ways it cannot happen that way um but yeah let's see man let's see going forward what happens with joe um i hopefully they don't do that hopefully they just leave him alone but i have a theory that i have a feeling that this won't last i don't think it is going to last it's going to be too much trouble for what it's worth especially you know having just newly moved your family to an entire new location to then be dealing with all these you know 
um spotify employees being angry at you and feeling as if like you're putting the people that you know secured the deal in a bad position i don't know it just seems to be not to be worth the squeeze especially if you've got the money in your back pocket you know, who gives a shit so let's see what happens going forward let me know your thoughts down below do you think joe should um what to give them the middle finger do you think daniel x should back him more in public the, the spotify ceo or do you think the spotify employees are within their right to say hey we were here before this guy um we built this company with our liberal blue haired um you know selves right you can tell the piss out of us so much we want but we are integral to his company so you should be able to choose us over him or it's either him or us kind of thing let me know in the comments down